one of the narratives that I'm getting tired of hearing is the fear of, oh, if we we play Trey, something bad's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think everybody just keeps getting this feeling like if we play Jimmy, you're guaranteed to have success. And I yeah. think the biggest misconception is everybody's basing it still off of 2019. Right. I think the problem that people don't understand is this team is not <clears throat> 2019. This is not. Mm-hmm. This team has a lot of the same players who they brought back, <clears throat> but a lot of these players who are not here anymore, the DeForest Buckners, um, D Ford's not really playing. I mean, we've been trying to wait for him to play, but he's not the same D Ford. Um, Richard Sherman is not the same 2019 Richard Sherman. Um, get it out of your mind that this is a win now move. I think that's the <laughs> biggest problem. So for me, it's looking at Trey Lance's mentally. There's nothing that is probably going to inhibit him from playing. Yeah. Uh, people keep saying, hey, you know, Jimmy, if you put a good team around Jimmy, Jimmy's going to win. Jimmy's going to do good. But li- listen to that narrative. You always have to put something good around Jimmy to have success. Whereas yep. the reason why they moved up to number three to get a quarterback like this is he's going to make the rest of the team better. Right. That's the difference. So with Trey Lance playing this year, it's not only the benefit of the easy schedule. It's not only getting to learn some of that Jimmy style offense, but a lot of people uh, keep saying, hey, they saw him throwing short passes, short passes, short passes. The way I look at that is like when a coach sets you up and tells you to do layups, give him a layup first. Mm-hmm. All it is is to get your rhythm down. But if anybody thinks like, man, this is going to be the same offense where it's just dink and dunk. Yeah, he might have that. But the dude has the arm and the mobility and the bootleg, uh, the Kubiak style in him yep. to get out and hit those big plays that Kyle's been waiting to hit. The plays yep. that have been missing. Yes. The reason why we struggle to win games on offense when we shouldn't be struggling to win games on offense. Yeah. Yeah, I understand, Kyle. You know, we ended up with that fantastic defense and everything seemed fine and it may have made some decision-making different in terms of play calling, but I still believe that Kyle wants to have that type of offense where it's no longer dictated by who he's playing. It's more of the Bill Walsh style that we're going to dictate what you do. Yeah. You have to defend us. And I feel like that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I, nothing against Jimmy. Nothing. The guy, uh, you know, like people say, you know, it, it's not injuries are uh, an unfortunate part of the game. But I know I have family members who they get hurt all the time. And sometimes you don't know why. It's just something that happens to people. So he's one of those guys who just gets injured all the time. It's just unfortunate. Yeah. So, But the, the fans get, move on. Mm-hmm. Move on. The move was already made. Yeah. It already happened. It's like you guys don't see it right in front of you. It's over. You know yeah. what I mean? So get ready to move on. Support Trey. And let's let's go for the, uh, you know, let's go for some long term success. Let's try to get it. Let's try to get another ball. Let's try to get some you know, a nice stretch. People keep losing perspective that it's all about the future. Trey Lance is the first round pick in 2022 and 2023. Yeah. Like you have to be thinking about long term. Mm-hmm. Yep. So hey, it was fun uh, chopping it up with you in the chat yesterday, man. Yep, for sure. Yep. Have a good one.